everyone and welcome back to another video. Today will also be a science video and we're going to be talking about the characteristics of living things. So living things range from us humans to plants to animals. And as we go through this video, I'll do my best to provide you guys with multiple examples for each single characteristic as we go down the list. So first of all is a response to stimuli. Um, stimuli is anything that incites a response from a bodily function or a bodily organ. So I'll jot that down, function or organ. And let's go over some of the three most important ones that we see on a daily basis. So first of all is light. Uh, light can vary between each living thing because everything reacts differently to light. But for humans, the common case is that when a light bulb turns on around us, then our eyes have to adjust in order to see things better. Whereas when it's dark, our eyes have to adjust and our pupils dilate so that we can see things better. Um, for sound, our brain, it, our brain creates an auditory stimulus so that we can formulate the words in our brain and process what somebody is telling us. Um, sound can also be different for animals, but plants don't necessarily have a stimulus to sound. Um, the last one is touch. Uh, touch can vary between every single living thing. Uh, for humans, mostly it's just an automatic response. For example, when somebody touches us on the shoulder, we automatically turn around to see what they're about to tell us. Um, and it can be different for every living thing. So the second characteristic is the ability to grow or develop. And growth usually happens over a period of time. It doesn't happen instantaneously or overnight. So let's talk about plants. Plants can grow and develop faster, usually faster than human beings. Human beings. So for example, um, this tiny plant can grow into this big one over the period of one month. But for humans, it takes more time. For example, this child is four or five at the moment. And within a year or maybe one and a half years, that child will go grow to be four foot ten. And it's not only height that develops, it's also mental state, it's also um, your features that develop, and this happens over a period of time, like I said. And uh, similar to humans, animals also grow um, in a similar way. Okay, the third characteristic is the ability to reproduce. Um, this is just basically creating offspring. So just like humans make babies, um, animals and plants also find a way to reproduce in, the, in, in a similar manner. Um, plants, you might not notice it, but they release something called pollen, which can then be used to create a tinier plant. Um, and bees are the helping agents in germination, specifically for plants. Okay, our fourth characteristic is that the organism has to have homeostasis. And we went over this in the last video, so... Um, if you're not quite sure about it still, you can watch that video and then come back to this one. But homeostasis, in short, is the ability to regulate internal conditions. Um, two examples I gave here were temperature and water. Uh, temperature and water are key things to regulate inside of not only our bodies, but animals' bodies and plants' bodies because they're what keeps us um, at a comfortable condition um, all times of the day. So temperature needs to be regulated, for example, when it's really cold outside, your body has to find a way to warm yourself up, and that can be in the form of shivering, for example. Water balance is really important because uh, we need water to survive, and if our body doesn't conserve water, or if our body doesn't let go of water, then our internal condition and our internal balance will be a little bit messed up. So it's important for every organism to have homeostasis. The fifth characteristic is that it's made of cells. Cells are the building block of anything living. Um, cells can vary between animals and plants, but that still doesn't change the basic definition and the basic purpose of a cell. So if, um, so a cell has many organelles, such as the mitochondria, the nucleus, which contains the, the genetic codes, 
which are super important for formulating anything living. So like I said, it can differ between animal cells and plant cells, just the structure, but, I, but otherwise the function is the same. Okay, the sixth characteristic is that the organism must have genetic material. So as I mentioned before, uh, the nucleus contains, I don't know if you can see what I just highlighted, but the nucleus contains genetic material. So in order for, a, for an organism to have genetic material, it must be made of cells. Okay, so genetic material consists of DNA or RNA, which codes for the genes of an organism. And these genes are received from the parents, or um, if it's asexual reproduction, um, then the organism will only have one parent, but still, the genes will still be received from the parent or parents. Um, uh, the drawing that I gave here is the double helix pattern for DNA and uh, yeah, so I just thought that drawing would help so that you could recognize a little bit. Um, the seventh characteristic is that the organism must be able to get rid of bodily waste um, or any sort of uh, toxins that it doesn't require. Um, this is basically excretion. So the human body actually has a system of excretion and that is how you get rid of all the toxins. For example, human feces. Um, uh, but for plants, it's a little bit different. For plants, they have something called gas release and this happens th through the microscopic stoma that are on the un underside of the leaf. So I'm just gonna highlight these little dots here because those are microscopic, meaning that you can't see them with your bare eye, but if you put a plant section under a microscope, you'll be able to see them. Now what these stoma do are really, really helpful. They get rid of the gas that is harmful to the plant or that contains the waste of the plant, but at the same time, they do their best to keep the water content inside, the water content that the plant needs. Okay. And finally, the eighth characteristic is that the organism must have the ability to use energy. So for example, in humans, uh, it's cellular respiration. And this doesn't only go for humans, but it goes for animals and it goes for plants. So every cell has an organelle called the mitochondria. Uh, you might've heard it as the powerhouse of the cell. But this organelle is very, very important because it hosts cellular respiration which is the powerhouse for creating energy in our bodies. And cellular respiration is also another important bodily function that goes on in our cells as we speak today. Um, yeah, and as I said, this is same for all plants and animals, including us, because uh, we are using this function right now too. And since that was the last characteristic, I'll briefly go over what we talked about today. So we started out at the top, we defined that living things can range from a number of uh, living organisms, such as humans, plants, and animals. Um, we defined all the characteristics of a living thing, for example, the response to stimuli, the ability to grow or develop, the ability to reproduce, homeostasis, made of cells, has genetic material, able to get rid of bodily waste, and the ability to use energy. Now, uh, I know that some of the topics in this video were a little bit confusing, such as you might not have heard what cellular respiration means, um, but if you ever want me to go over any of the topics, you can please, uh, please drop it down in the comments below. Um, if you have any suggestions for a video topic, you can also email me, I'll link the email in, um, in the description box below. In either case, please share this video with anybody who you think might benefit from it. Please like and subscribe and be sure to stay tuned next week for a new video. Mm -hmm.